I am Lily Moon 961 and for once I'm not going to waste your time with any preamble here. The title says it all. This game broke me. Completely, utterly broke me. I'm so broken. And I just finished playing Sora Story. Honey, you've got a big storm coming. I need you to understand that I'm just talking about Sora Story when I'm talking about Kingdom Hearts rechain of memories. This game broke me and I'm not even through the entire game because there's still Riku's story to do. And I need you to understand, if you've seen this video here, you know that I've been on a journey to see which Kingdom Hearts game is my favorite. It's not gonna be this one, no. And that actually surprised me a little <laughs> because the first time I played this game, I actually really enjoyed it, loved it. I was completely enamored with the story, at, at least with the Castle Oblivion parts, because the Disney parts of the story were really just rehashes, but the Castle Oblivion stuff was so good, especially in Sora's part of the story, that I was just, like, I loved this game so much the first time I played it. It was definitely one of my favorites early on in my Kingdom Hearts journey back when I first started playing in 2014. <laughs> but, but now's a different story. Cause see, this is 2023. I am 29 years old at this point. Yes, a lot of time has gone by since the previous video. And the funny part is, is that I started playing Rechain of Memories almost immediately after I finished that video. And it took this long to get here. And I'm going to tell you why. And I'm, I'm just gonna let you know, this video is gonna be really short. And also this video is specifically <laughs> for people who have played this game. If you haven't played this game, you're not gonna know what I'm talking about, okay? You don't need to be here, okay? Because like I said, the title of the video says it all. This game broke me, broke my soul a little bit. I'm so broken. So, and this is also unscripted, so I'm just saying what I'm feeling because I just finally finished this game. Or rather, Sora's story today. <laughs> okay, let's calm down just slightly. Because <laughs> you can tell, this game broke me. I've lost my mind. You could say, look, forget Dark Souls. <laughs> forget all these other games with high difficulty. Ha! <laughs> Like, what? This, it. I'm so broken. Okay, let's do some backtracking here. All right, picture this. March 2023. I had just finished with the other video. I start rechain of memories, going through Sora's story, and you know, early on, all is well. Everything's going fine. We're doing good. And because I had played the game two other times before, and one of those times was on proud mode, like, I was breezing through the game early on. I was breezing through it, like, going through the story, just kind of enjoying myself. Easy breezy, beautiful cover girl, okay? That's how wonderful it was. It was a lovely experience. I even got lethal frame early, in the sense that I got the slate early. <laughs> put a pin in this, we're gonna come back to that. But I learned the slate early on in the game. And then around the time that I learned Lethal Frame, the slate, things started to go south because for whatever reason, this game decided that it did not want to treat me well anymore. Because those of you who have played this game know that Lethal Frame is the game breaking slate of this entire thing. It breaks the game as soon as you get it. Not as soon as you learn it, but as soon as you have the cards to complete the slate, it breaks the game. The game is pretty much done and you can just breeze through it, no problem. <laughs> oh, but honey children, luck was not on my side 
it tends to not be on my side when it comes to these recent playthroughs of games for some reason. I don't know why. But with this game in particular, those of you who've played it, you know that Rechain of Memories is very luck-based. Cards are randomly generated in terms of when you get random drops or when you go to the Moogle shops to get cards. And a lot of the game is about arranging your deck and having the slates you need for when you encounter bosses, okay? And like I said, everything was going good for a while until I got to Vexen. And see, Vexen is Vexen, hence the name. But also, more importantly, when it comes to Vexen, he has always been a bit of a roadblock for me. I remember the first time I played this game, part of the reason I was even able to get through it the first time was because someone gave me the tip about Lethal Frame the very first time I played through the game. And so I had already had the cards I needed to use it and then Vexen became easy back then. But see, for whatever reason, like I said, the random drops, Moogle shops, no matter how far I progressed through the game, I never got Lethal Frame. I never got a stop card. That was all I needed. I just needed a stop card. And I went out of my way to get as much Moogle points as I could get, did a lot of backtracking to try and go to levels where I thought it might show up. Nothing. I could not get Lethal Frame, no matter what I did, because no stop cards appeared ever throughout, the, throughout my entire playthrough this time. So no lethal frame. There was no game-breaking mechanic that I could use. So when I got to Vexen, problems arised because I couldn't beat him immediately. And you know, again, and I was 28 at the time, but you know, got a job, got things to do, got bills to pay. Ain't nobody got time for all this backtracking. Okay, this was taking like days just to get up to a point where I was leveled up enough to even attempt to fight him simply because I had breezed through so much of the early game that I was severely underleveled for Vexen. And so, two months go by, and I turned 29 in May. So, yeah. So then, eventually, I'd say maybe a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, I guess early June, I don't know. Time is, is a construct to me at this point. It goes by so fast and and it just gets away from me. So I don't even know when I really started playing again. I started playing again. I get through Vexen because I found some other slates that I could use. Mainly I was using things like Freeze Raid and stuff like that. And I also, um, I, I, mostly Freeze Raid and just Ice and not using Donald because Donald is just pre-programmed to heal your enemies if they have any elemental stuff attached to them whatsoever. Like, Donald was killing me. I could not use him at all. He was just so unreliable. And anytime I desperately needed him, he just, like, whether to heal me or to damage the enemy, he, he would just do the opposite of what I wanted him to do. So, like, and Goofy, you know, sometimes has this habit where he doesn't show up. I don't know what it is about rechain of memories and wanting to torture the player, but that's what they do in this game. Like, people complain about Donald and Goofy in Kingdom Hearts 1 and in Kingdom Hearts 2 for always being kind of dead, but... <laughs> no! I mean, don't, don't complain about that to me, okay? Don't, don't complain about that to me, okay? You'll get slapped. <laughs> 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 I'm so broken. Whew, okay, I sound downright psychotic. Okay, and also, I meant Fire Raid. Fire Raid. I used Fire Raid and Fyra and Fyraga on him a lot. Eventually, I got him. I, I defeated him both times. But both times were a bit of a struggle. Like, the first time more so, his first battle, and then you have to fight him again in Twilight Town, and that wasn't as bad. I got through it fairly easily, but... But still, but still. And and then following that, you know, you have to deal with Riku a lot. And let me just tell you, Riku is a pansy. Like, replica, what, whatever, I don't care. He, like, he's a total pansy. Like, for me anyway, he's not really difficult for me to be. Anytime that I've played the game, he's he hasn't been the one to really challenge me and make me feel like, you know, my soul is breaking from a video game. No, Riku's not the one, I'm sorry to tell you. He ain't the one for me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't 
I'm losing my mind. The game broke me. Read that title again so that you understand. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure you're aware by now, but just, just understand. I am broken. <laughs> I'm so broken. Okay, so the next boss that got me that was not as much of a roadblock, but was somehow worse. Larkseen. Larkseen, just, she's so fast. It's like she throws out cards so fast. And for whatever reason, when I was playing this time, I noticed it more than I ever have before. But there's sometimes the delay for when you put slates out. And for whatever reason, this time around, that delay was really hurting me. Because Larkseen is just so fast. It's not even... And, and not only fast, but she has certain attacks that like paralyze you or trap you. And she, she was, and, and there were times when I just got desperate and used Donald. And of course, you know that Donald used lightning and he healed her. And just th that particular, large scene is the worst. <laughs> I can't stand dealing with her. Like it, ooh, I can't stand dealing with her. <laughs> Like, cause even within the fight, she's so antagonistic and it's like, woman, if you don't shut up, I am trying to get through this because I ain't got time for this. I am 29. I got a job and bills to pay. I ain't got time for your foolishness. Who would I tell you? This, this video is definitely like, this is the dollar store brand of buffoonery right here. Dollar store quality buffoonery right here. This is just madness. This this video and everything that I'm feeling right now because this game broke me. I'm so broken. So anyway, eventually I get past Lark scene because I learned a new slate that honestly saved me. There was a slate, what was it called? A judgment. Judgment was the slate that I used on her. And I remember now there was another one for Vexen because Vexen's always on the mind when it comes to this game because he's still the worst. Um, <laughs> by Raga Burst, I think is what it was, where Donald became useful in the fight because basically you use Donald, fire, and I think an attack card, and he'll just volley out fire and that set Vexen aflame. And then when Axel came in and set him aflame, I'm like, yes, burn him alive, please, yes. Turn him into ashes. Thank you. Yes, I sound psychotic. I know this. Yes! Again, the game broke me, okay? This should be expected by now. So anyway, we get past Lark scene. And I think Riku showed up one more time. We don't care about Riku. If we don't care, Riku, just sit your behind down somewhere, please. Like he's more annoying than say challenging. He's just annoying because of how much he shows up. Just sit your daddy tail down somewhere, please. Okay, I'm composed now, forgive me. Okay, the final straw was Marluxia phase one. About two weeks ago, if I recall, I was trying to fight him. And again, I was using the slates that I had learned because again, I still don't have lethal frame and I can't get it no matter what I do. So Marluxia just kind of, I think it was Marluxia that truly broke me because then I had to stop again for about two weeks before I came back today and finally beat him. But his first phase, he just has a lot of zeros and just has these attacks where he warps around and sometimes getting to him can be tough in and of itself. And the deck I had was fine, but for whatever reason, when I was trying to fight him two weeks ago, I felt like I had to, to make an entirely different deck simply because like I was just losing confidence in my deck building abilities and all of that. So I built an entirely different deck, but I wasn't really cognizant of what it did. And so I went into the fight trying to beat him with this brand new deck and it didn't work out well. And I think I remember before I quit on that particular day, I switched back to my previous deck. And so when I went in today, I went in with my original deck that I had, that had like the judgment slates, which I found out aside from lethal frame is one of the best slates in the game because it's basically strike raid, but with the arrow card and when it hits stuff, it hits stuff repeatedly. Like, yes, thank you. 
Th this slate right here, if you don't have lethal frame, you better have that slate on lock because judgment just does everything that needs to be done. Okay, it's 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 a beautiful slate. Anywho, whew, I go into this fight today. And on my first round, I, I do pitiful. Like, I get him down to, I think, close to his last bar of health, not quite, but it was enough to where I was like, okay, maybe just adjust this deck slightly. All I did was just move some cards around and I went back in, fought him again. And I will tell you, it, it, it was brutal. It was brutal. But somehow, like, when I tell you that I was on my last slither of health and I lost, I lost track of what I was even doing after a point. Like, and Donald, for whatever reason, became my saving grace in this fight because he kept healing me. Like, it, it was as if it, the game knew at this point that it had done his, it, it, it had done the job in breaking me. Whew. And that's also why I don't necessarily care about the quality of this video right now because again, as the title says, <laughs> this game broke me, okay? It broke me, Br broke me completely. I'm so broken. So I, I was, oh my last slither of health, I tell you, literally one, I probably had one HP left when I beat Marluxia because Literally, when I got down to that slither, I had to recharge my cards almost at the exact same time, which is typically a recipe for death. I cannot tell you how much I was dodge rolling at the very end. And when my cards reloaded, there wasn't time to look for heals, but I just attacked. I attacked and attacked and he was dead because I guess he was on his last bar of health anyway. And I was barely cognizant of that. I just attacked because I was like, I'm not doing this again. You can't make me do this again. No. Never again. But then, you know, there's two more phases of the boss to go. But thankfully it allows you to save your game after the first save. Uh, not the first save, the first phase, sorry. And no, I'm not editing that out. I don't care enough right now. Can't you see? Again, the title. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm rambling way too much. <laughs> I'm so broken. The final level. So Marluxia's second phase, which is like that big, Thing where he's up in the air and whatnot that, that was more of a war of attrition really on his part because he was like throwing out weak cards and stuff that I could break easily and it was fine that went over quickly but the only problem and the only thing that was making me panic internally was that okay you can beat that first phase easily enough or not the first but the second phase easily enough but then there's that final phase where he has a bunch of different abilities and I, I feel like I went into that battle completely just dazed out in the sense that I, I had gone to a different plane of existence. I went into that battle and it, it was just all out attacking from me completely. Like he made me lose my cards, I think twice. No, no, three times, three times during that whole fight. And it didn't matter. I would just roll around and get them. Like he was... He was actually merciful to me because normally that third phase is a little bit uh, sketchy and it can be kind of tough. Like I remember from the past that it took a few tries for me to get it, but not not today, <laughs> not today, because I had hit that point where it's like, no, Marlush is going down today. <laughs> He's going down today and, and that's it because I can't do this anymore. So I did win the fight on my first try. <laughs> Because, I mean, I don't really know how. I think I, I had those Judgment Slates, which did a lot of damage. I had, um, what was it, Sonic Rave, I think is what it's called. You know, Strike Raids. Just all of that stuff. And I had Kiraga and, you know, the Jafar enemy card is also one of those game-breaking cards. But only when you have that in combination with like lethal frame because then it just makes everything easy because you could do like three lethal frames in like a row and your enemy's health will go bye bye and you only have to have a few successful attacks after that unless your enemy is throwing out zeros and for whatever reason the third phase of marluxia today just didn't have zeros in his deck which thank you because whew, like it just it worked out and I finally beat the game. But I can't tell you anything about the story and my experience with the story this time because it took from March to almost July <laughs> to finish this one game. And I took a long, 
and I'm choking over my words now, but long breaks in between all of this because I just couldn't do it. <laughs> I just, so in terms of my Kingdom Hearts journey and getting it back to something, I don't know, coherent, this game is definitely challenging and beating bosses is probably more satisfying, at least to me, in this game than most others, <laughs> I can't, See, I can't talk, but anyway, most others that I've played. <laughs> Again, this is gonna be dollar store quality when it comes to this video, cause I don't care enough to go back <laughs> and correct stuff. I don't care right now, because I'm just happy that it's over. Or rather that Sora's story is over, because there's still Riku's story to do. And hopefully it won't torment me as much as Sora's story did, because it, never again, I don't, I, I mm -mm because it broke me. Um, I am satisfied with the fact that I could beat this game without lethal frame though, and on proud mode. And I was under leveled because I think on my very first playthrough, I was level 84 when I beat it. And on my second playthrough of the game, I think a few years ago, I was like level 72 on proud mode when I beat it. Today, I beat it at level 66. So yeah, I'm not sure if that's under leveled or, is, or if that's the normal level that you would be at. I don't know. All I know is that I beat this game without Lethal Frame. I'm happy about that. And that's all y'all need to know. <laughs> that this was a battle and that it broke me. I'm so broken. And I'm not sure why exactly it broke me. I think it was just the challenge of this game. The challenge combined with just things that were going on in my life at the time too. And my job and just the day-to-day -day stresses that I was dealing with at the time, all of it together, somewhere along the line, it, it just broke me. <laughs> and I know you're gonna get tired of me saying that, but that's the slogan of this entire video. Um, if you like games that force you to strategize, this game is fine. It's fine. It's just very heavily luck-based, so it is going to challenge you. And yes, beating bosses, especially those that require you to really like maneuver and really transform your deck into something that efficiently takes them out, that's extremely satisfying. I can tell you plainly, it's some of the most satisfying moments that I've had within a game, but it came with the cost. It came with the cost of at least some of my sanity. I'm hoping that I can get my sanity back because I'm pretty sure Y'all can hear it in my voice. Y'all can hear it throughout this time that I've been rambling. That this game kind of took some of my sanity with it. And that may not be, that may not be, um, good. <laughs> like, for you guys. Especially if you happen to watch this video without ever playing this game before. And you're listening to me ramble. Um, yeah. Like, if you want to get into Kingdom Hearts, good. Play the first game. And then when it comes to Rechain of Memories, um, tread cautiously if you decide to play it. <laughs> like, especially if you really just want the story, maybe it might be better to just watch the cutscenes online. But at the same time, there is something extremely gratifying in actually defeating these organization members that just are vexing. Goodbye. But yeah, I think that's all I need to say. Um, this game broke me, as you can probably tell. Um, I don't know if I'll immediately jump into playing Riku's story for this game, because again, technically I haven't even finished the game yet, but I don't know if I'll return to talk about it because it may not be particularly, I feel like I said that word, whatever. It may not be all that noteworthy because Riku's story is typically easier anyway. Um, so I don't know if I'll come back and talk about Riku's story for Rechain of Memories. I'm not sure if I'll care enough. Um, <laughs> and I guess maybe, um, it may be a minute before I play Kingdom Hearts 2. Yeah, <laughs> because I need to kind of step back away because with Kingdom Hearts 2, I'm debating on whether I want to play it on proud mode again or if I want to try critical mode. And see, if I'm already breaking from Rechain of Memories, I don't know what critical mode of Kingdom Hearts 2 would do to me. Um, I might actually go insane. So 
at the very least, I need to take a break from Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> because apparently, this series has this underlying intent to make you go insane <laughs> with the gameplay. Because some of these bosses are just... Woo! But anywho, that's all I have to tell you today. If you somehow enjoyed this rambling session of mine, please leave a like on this video and you can follow me on the rest of my Kingdom Hearts journey, I suppose. If I make more videos about it moving forward, I don't know yet. We'll see. Um, but for right now, yeah, well, I'll probably continue with the journey and let you guys know of my thoughts. But I mean, I just, I don't know right now. It's just, whew, this game broke me. I'm so broken. Anyway. Y'all have a good day. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Bye. All right. Love you. Mwah.